Welcome to Make Ready TV, where the world's most experienced firearms professionals train you in the comfort of your own home. I'm Matt Jaquies. And I'm Kaylee Jeans. In our tactical training segment, we're going to Travis Haley to review movement with a carbine. And then in our self-defense segment, we're going to talk to Louis Auerbuck, and he's going to give you some pointers on how to run that handgun, specifically your semi-auto. In our third segment, we're going to my dad to review pivots and turns with a shotgun. Outstanding. And then we're going to have some pro tips from guys like Pat Rogers, and James Williams. Now let's go to Travis Haley. Alright, this next period of instruction is going to be an introduction to movement. Now we're going to start the movement with reactionary shooting. So we'll have a left and a right in a 180 situation. So I'll talk through it. It's very simple actually. A lot of people try to overcomplicate just reacting to a target, whether it's to the left or whether it's to the right. The important thing to remember is the mindset in training. Yes, we know there's a target right there. In reality, we're not going to know. So you've got to practice perception in your mind. So when I'm standing here, focus on something else. Don't know that target's there and getting ready to turn, because I see a lot of students in training, they're just already ready. So basically, the mental side is not there. You've skipped past the mental side, and you're ready to do the physical side. So let's bring ourselves back to reality and forget about it. Now, when you see something, or you perceive something, say it's an explosion. Say the buzzer goes off, and you turn. You're surprised, whatever the case may be. You need to identify things. Identification is the key to survival in a combat situation. So I look, and now, turning. This is where people overcomplicate. They either take a step back, or they say you have to take a step out and drive the gun up. I say turn as fast as humanly possible. Just react. I use kind of the football drill mentality, where if you could actually get your feet pumping and turn. You ever see football players do this when they're in practice? That's kind of what we're doing here. We're doing simple, small chops. So when I perceive, boom, I'm driving the gun up and moving my feet as quickly as possible. Again, if I don't have to move my feet, I could drive the gun up because, again, it's all in our upper body. So I could do this, but in, in reality, you're typically, with your body alarm reaction, is going to drive you towards that target. It's natural to do so. So again, the perception, drive the feet. Now, I can't even tell myself what I just did with my feet. I just know they moved very quickly and got into that solid shooting platform. I'm moving deliberate and I'm moving dynamically. Same if it's to the rear or the other side. So if I'm facing back here and I perceive a threat behind me, I'll look and drive. Now, the key to turning to the rear is driving through the weapon system. So if I was to turn around, I'm perceiving and I'm basically trying to lift my body up with my rifle because I need to come up on the threat. So I'm driving and getting out of the way as quickly as possible, driving the weapon system up. What I don't want to do is take a step and drive out because now I'm getting mechanical sway action and the weapon system's coming out at an angle. It's not coming right up on the target. So think about those mechanics when you're doing this. So again, identify and quickly turn. A little hopscotch of the feet there. I drive the weapon system up, snap it to the target, and then I engage as many rounds necessary. What we're going to do now is run some live fire on this. I'll demonstrate from the right side, from the left side, and then I'm going to show you both ways on the 180. A lot of people say, hey, if you're carrying a handgun, never turn inward with your handgun side. I say it depends on the environment. The environment may disrupt you and make you have to turn outside. It may have to turn inside. It depends on the situation you're in. If I've got a, a buddy standing right here and we're talking and I hear a threat here, okay, I may have to turn to either side depending on where he is, obstacles around me or anybody else for that matter. So the world is not absolute, so you can't be absolute to it. Okay, here we go. So what's going to happen? I'm going to load and make ready. Left, right, and I'm going to go ahead and lower and turn to the right. So I'm going to call it for myself. I'm going to just say left. All right, so that's from the right side. I'm going to go ahead and change direction over here. Same exact thing. Forget about what you're doing. Relax for a minute. 
right. Search and assess, okay. Now, let's turn it around. I'm gonna go to the left side first, and then I'm gonna go to the right side. Gun! All right. Now, let's turn it around the other direction. Right! So again, it doesn't matter how you turn, it matters how efficient and effectively you turn. There's no right way to do it in a real world. You could go off a of doctrine, but just keep an open mind to your environments. They can be disruptive, they will change the way you shoot. So just think about that in these simple, simple movement drills. Make Ready TV is brought to you by FNH USA, Smith & Wesson, TNVC, and Pro Ears. It's good advice from Travis Haley, except I think he runs 100 miles an hour all the time. Well, all that extra fast footwork for you guys is keeping you sexy. You're welcome, everybody. Now let's go to Louis Auerbach and review manipulating a semi-auto. Manipulation of a semi-automatic pistol, the weapon has to be checked. You need a gun for a gunfight, that's the old saying. This is not good enough to just do this and assume the weapon's ready to roll. Plus, on top of that, I've just swept an area over there by being stupid and possibly covered Lord knows what. So to manipulate the weapon, the weapon needs to be checked straight down range, which means on a target range or at home. If this is the way one manipulates a weapon, one has to turn the body and face straight down range. Use brute force and ignor ignorance to manipulate the slide. Keep hearing about females don't have enough strength on occasion, they don't have enough upper body strength. As far as I'm concerned, that's a bunch of hooey. There's enough males that don't have the strength either. So if you don't have the strength, if it's a strong recoil spring to pull the slide back this way, hold the slide and push with the bottom arm. You have a lot more strength with shoulder muscle. To check the chamber, and I am going to turn the muzzle now for video illustrative purposes. To check the chamber, there's a bunch of ways of doing it. This way, this way, this way, which is called the LA Claw. Los Angeles Police Department came up with that. So that's the LA part. This is the claw with the hand. What one is doing is checking to see if there's a round in the chamber, which there currently is. You can do it with a trigger finger, south paws, come over the top because the ejection port's on the right side, not on the left. That is the first check to make sure there's a round in the chamber. The second check is to drop the magazine, check how many rounds are in the magazine. If you just check the chamber, all you know is you have one round in the gun. You don't know how many more. Then the magazine is inserted and double checked. A personal thing I do, I don't insert the magazine into the weapon. I open my hand and slam the weapon onto the, onto the magazine. It gets a more positive insert and a quicker reacquisition back onto target. Just a personal thing may help the viewer. Once that is checked, manual safeties need to go on on this weapon system, decockers on the decock weapons, SIGs, Berettas, weapons like that, then set up how one wishes, straight finger back into the holster without sweeping these fingers. A lot of people will reholster like this. Not a good idea. Reholster one-handed. Unloading the weapon, first thing one does, magazine out. It goes behind the little fingers of the shooting hand. Reason for that 
it's a carryover to the street. If you have to clear a malfunction, have any weapons problems, this is the only magazine you have. You need to retain it where you can re-access it once you have sorted out the problem. Then the weapon is rolled over to the shooter's right. The muzzle is facing downrange. This hand comes over the ejection port, retract the slide, the cartridge comes out in your hand, and then recheck the chamber immediately. If you've left the magazine in, all you'll wind up doing is jacking another round into the chamber. So you do a visual check, a tactile check, and this weapon is now unloaded. Revolvers are a different kettle of fish. Many people regard them as dinosauric. They are good weapons. The problem with a revolver, in my opinion, and this is a personal opinion, is that it, you have to swim 20% harder upstream to shoot it well, manipulate it loading, unloading. And if a revolver dies, contrary to most popular opinion, when it dies, it jams, as opposed to malfunctions. A malfunction you can clear. A jam, you are done for the fight until later, if you stay alive. Well, there's some straightforward talk from Lou Auerbuck right there, and he's absolutely correct. Know what you're running, know how it works, and know how to use it. Absolutely. You're only going to be as strong as the amount of work that you put in. Now let's go to my dad and review pivots and turns with a shotgun. The only thing certain about combat is that it's uncertain. Not every threat is going to be kind enough to present itself to you at a 90 degree angle in front. Uh, movement is a good thing. Uh, combat is fluid, that means it changes, it moves, and it's 360 degrees. We have warning systems to help us survive. Vision is a primary, most of us are visually dependent, but we have ears too. And you may have to respond to something that you pick up in your peripheral vision, which should be up and running all the time that you can. And you may hear something and need to look and see what's going on and make a decision to react then. We have to look because we don't just spin around and start blasting things. We're the good guys. Okay, the bad guys have better rules of engagement. They pretty much shoot whoever they want. We're going to be held accountable for what we do, and we have to identify the target before we make a decision to shoot or not. We're going to work through some footwork here to get your body in the box facing in a new direction with a shootable uh, platform and uh, some wags in the past have referred to this as Morrigan line dancing. We're going to start with a threat left because that one's pretty easy, okay, and then we'll progress through four variations on that, uh, ending up with a target to our rear, okay. If we hear something off to the support side, and you left-handers in the group just reverse this, my support side uh, for me is my left side, okay. I hear something, I pick up something in my peripheral vision. The first thing I have to do is identify it. All right, so I'm going to turn my head and look and see what's there. All right, sure enough, I have a problem. Then I'm going to reverse the box. I'm going to take the shooting side heel and put it in with the uh, support side toe, simply reversing the box. Weight goes to the forward leg, then I'm going to push with that leg and turn my hips. That's my center of gravity. As I turn my center of gravity to address the threat, I'm going to bring the weapon up to bear and go to work. Okay, going to the other side. We have eliminated the pivot because it's going to be built in, okay? When I hear something, when I pick something up in my peripheral vision, as before, I'm going to turn my head and look. What's going on over here? Sure enough, I have a problem. At the same time I turn my head and look, I'm going to take that shooting side toe and I'm going to point it where I'm looking, like so. If there's nothing there, then just bring the toe back around and continue the march, all right? I'm going to turn and look. I'm going to step through the hole that I've created here, bring the muzzle up and engage. Okay, Target to the rear. We have two directions that we can turn here. Um, going to the support side is a little bit easier. The one, the last one we'll do is a uh, threat to the shooting side. That one's kind of messed up, but we'll do this one first. Okay, Again, I'm going to turn that toe outboard that keeps me from torsioning my body when I turn my head to look. I'm going to point that toe and look. Yep, I've got a problem over there. I'm going to plant my toe the weight goes to the forward leg. I'm going to push with that leg, come up on the target. 
And last but not least, this one is difficult because the support side foot is in front when I'm facing this way, and it needs to be in front when I'm facing the other way. So the step needs to be a little bit long, and we have to make sure it goes in the direction that I'm going and not just off to the side. As before, when I look, I'm gonna turn that toe outboard, and I may want to over-rotate it just a tad, okay? I'm gonna look, step, pivot, up on the target. Now these take practice and you're not going to become a master of it overnight, but it isn't ballet. It's not that difficult, okay? You can practice these foot maneuvers all day long for the rest of your life if you want to. You meet a friend on the street, hey, how you doing? Haven't seen you in a while, shake hands, okay, time to go. All right, easy day, step, pivot, and away you go. Right? Incorporate this into your daily activity, it's free practice. You don't have to go to the range and you don't have to have your shotgun. There's two different schools of thought there on movement. You've got Bill's technique, which is a great technique. I've used it for years and I love it. And if you speed it up through good training, you get faster at it and you end up how Travis Haley does it. Two different schools of thought and Travis does it. Definitely, and all that toe tapping going on. My dad has bragged about his dancing skills many years, so more on line dancing sucks out. Now let's go to Pat Rogers and James Williams for some pro tips. The Make Ready TV Pro Tips are presented by Battle Comp Enterprises. When I first got into this in the early 1980s, there were very few places where people could go to train. Certainly the military had training opportunities for certain people within certain units. And police departments bumbled around with their training. Right now, we are lucky in that there are a lot of good trainers on the market, a lot of military guys with strong experience. And once we start raising the bar, that bar is raised for everybody. The issue that we face is, who do we go to see? You have to seek your training wisely. There's a lot of really good people out there, and there are some people that may not be as good. You need to seek this information. And while the internet is not always a good place to get information, there are certain websites that you can go that will allow you to read AARs from students who have been in classes. Those AARs are a source of great information. You will learn a lot about the instructors that are passing this information on if you read the AARs correctly. And by correctly, I mean this. We all look at things differently. We all have, we all have different priorities. At the end of the day, we have to be able to acquire information, good, solid, basic information, because Everything starts and ends with the basics. Advanced classes are only the basics executed more consistently and under a tighter time constraint. If you cannot master the basics, you can't master anything. I'm James Williams. This is my new fixed blade design produced by Columbia River Knife and Tool, CRKT. It's called the Sakimori. It is a smaller fixed blade version of the Hisho and the Shimbuto five and three quarters inches. It's a request from Japanese Defense Forces for a smaller knife, 15 centimeters or less. The blade, classical Japanese shape, very similar to some of the tanto that Masamune, one of the most famous swordsmiths of ancient Japan, his small tanto. It is O1 tool steel, very tough stuff. Blade, Penetrates well, slashes extremely well. You can see by the shape of the blade that this can be a very powerful close quarter battle knife. It also has other uses. Works very well for skinning. Um, it batons well, so you could literally, if you need to make a fireboard, you can baton it with a piece of wood on the back. It batons very well. It's a thick, sturdy knife in that sense. The handle is classical wrap in modern nylon, pregnated with resin. Extremely good grip, extremely strong grip. The shape of the handle is neutral, allows you to manipulate the knife however you need to. Various grasps that we looked at in our videos, easily applied with this knife. The sheath is Kydex. Particular method of mounting on a belt makes it easy to take it on and off the belt. If you take these two screws out, you then 
take this whole piece off and it fits very easy on Molly gear, easy to strap on, easy to slide in as we showed in the video series, easy to slide into your belt front or back to carry it. You'll notice also there's a screw here and this puts tension on the sheath. If you want more tension, you screw it down harder. If you want less tension, you release the screw out. So you have a lot of say in how much tension you want. Some of the guys that I work with that jump out of airplanes and do dangerous things wanted more retention when they needed it. So this makes it nice and simple. Screw it down and it's in there very solid. But yet, you can still access the knife rapidly. This is an important part. These are pressure fit. In the moment when you need a knife, it becomes really complicated to try to find it, unsnap this, unsnap that. Here, hit the knife, deploy it, we're good to go. Make Ready TV is brought to you by Brownells, The SIG Academy, Rand Innovations, and Core Bond. You know, Pat is spot on and has great tips about figuring out where you need to spend your hard-earned money. The internet's used for good and evil. Use it to your advantage. Know the background of the instructor you're going to and make sure that his techniques and what he's teaching will suit you. And James has me convinced I want to see CRKT knives. That's in my future. <laughs> Definitely. And if through your research on the internet you find that no one is near you, you can always log on to Pantio Productions who put those up there for you already. If you'd like more training from our instructors, either via streaming video or DVD, log on to our website at makereadytv.com. And that'll do it for this week, folks. Remember, spend your hard-earned money where you know you're going to benefit from it. Don't waste it. Things are getting hard to come by. Ammo's starting to come back. But we want you to be able to train smart, train often. Victory first. The Make Ready DVDs are available from brownells.com. <laughs> what we're going to talk about next Quieter. is the fundamental three. How do we handle this? Is I smart? <laughs> <laughs>